the British faction are here. Long awaited. I have never been so excited. For my own peoples to be represented in Hell Let Loose, it was only a matter of time, but... Jesus, did they take their sweet time. But that aside, Team 17 has brought out one of the bigger updates in the last few years, so let's get straight into it. I've played a good amount so far, a few games dipping my toes into it, so this is going to be mostly a first impressions, but I think I've had a good idea of what we're getting here with the new maps, additions, and factions. Let's start with Adriel. This is the new bridge map. I actually started as the Germans, which I was a little bit disappointed by because, god damn it, the British are being added in. I want to play as the British. Don't make me play as the Germans again. It makes me feel very unpatriotic. But hey, it gave us a good example of what it'd actually be like to fight against Blighty instead of as the, the Tommies, which I really wanted to do. The map itself is very familiar to what we've been playing before in the Western Fronts. Maps set in France. Of course, this is set in Denmark, but a lot of the terrain feels very similar from fighting over fields, hedges, ditches, going through rivers, so on and so forth. Something like a St. Mo and Glees, that kind of map. You will have experienced a lot of these assets, and you look, I'm not expecting them to make fresh assets for every single new map that comes out, but it does feel very familiar, and nothing all that different or exciting. Until, of course, we get to the famous bridge. And it's cool, but it's got nothing on Remagen. I'm not saying Remagen's a better map, I actually don't particularly enjoy that map. But in terms of the actual centerpiece of the map being this bridge, well, that's all Remagen is. Fight across one way over the river. It causes for some kind of dodgy gameplay as you get choke pointed, but... It's safe to say Remagen has this really unique setting. Driel, on the other hand, does have a bridge, but because there are different ways to get over the river that don't include the bridge, there isn't a whole lot of fighting that actually takes place on it. It's more of just a landmark to see where things are rather than an actual feature of the map itself. It is pretty cool, and I'm more glad it's there than not. But don't go into it thinking this is going to be another Remagen, which I think in most cases is probably a good thing for people. I didn't fight too much on top of the bridge. A lot of it was actually fighting from under the bridge, getting sniped down from above, because that is a point of this feature. Since there are multiple other places to cross the river here, a lot of the bridge attacks are going to be sniping down on the other causeways and crossing points. It is quite a lot of fun whether you want to cross at the barges with the shallower water or through the swampy bit. You have quite a few options there and there are a few points to defend and we set up some garrisons on each side as well. It was a, a lot of fun gameplay shooting over the river and having a few more options to cross it and Driel, well, I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10 if we're talking about Hell Let Loose maps. Look, it's better than Hurtgen Forest, but it's still not got anything on the beauty of St. Mary and Glees. But we did, as playing as the Germans as mentioned, get to see some of the new British tanks. Oh, yeah, boys. Okay, awesome. enemy, oh my god, tank. look at the fucking map. Two yeah. nice. tanks? Oh fuck. Piss off, ghost. You're in pieces. Yeah, you're about to be too. <laughs> nope, nope, you can't get me. I'm hiding You'll in the You'll float too! And I'm dead. The British have the Sherman Firefly. It's a beast with a 75 pounder. Actually, that's what my ex used to say. I'm joking. <laughs> that's why she left. The heavy tank that goes head to head with the Panzer IVs and the Tigers. Much like the US variant, the British Sherman Firefly has one of the strongest guns in the game and can take pot shots from a huge distance. The British also have the Cromwell, which is the medium tank, and that made quite a few entrances. I didn't see it too much, but it looks pretty cool and it's got a very iconic shape that you'll probably recognise on the battlefield. Its iconic design was amazing to see, especially on a map like El Alamein and look, we will get on to that because, well, I think that's what everybody's waiting for. Then we have the light tank, being the Tetrarch, which I didn't really see, but there was the British recon vehicle of the Daimler. Yes, it does look ridiculous, but I love this thing. It's a thing of beauty. <laughs> so I've teased it, but let's get on to it. The real big boy of the update. El Alamein. Adding in the British, I was hoping that we'd get some sort of variety, some difference from the Western maps. 
okay, we got Stalingrad, we got Kursk, they were pretty cool, but they were still, well, kind of dingy and muddy. But what if we were going south? This was in my speculation video, hoping that we'd get something like this with the introduction of the British, and I'm so, so glad that we did. Now, I got the chance to play as the Brits, picking up the Lewis gun myself, and my squad mate picked up the Bren gun. These are two of the new fast-firing weapons within the game, and uh, they're fine. I'd be interested to see how they work on other maps, but we had a few issues with them. <laughs> they were so hard to control and even sounded a little bit weird. I don't know if that's just some bugs in the sound design at the moment, but it's not quite as polished as a lot of the other guns. Saying that, many of the other weapons in the game, like, I don't know, the Thompson, have had many iterations of sound upgrades throughout the last few years. But something like the Lewis gun and the Bren gun, as you can see, is so hard to use on a map like El Alamein. It's very different to much of what we've seen before in Hell Let Loose. It is so big, so open. The fronts on each team are so wide and spread out. You're going to be fighting across what seems to be the biggest map that Hell Let Loose has to offer. Now, I don't know if that is the case, but because there is very little in terms of terrain details, buildings, all that sort of thing, or at least what buildings there are are very low down and small, you're going to be seeing across most of the map. And this is why it really champions snipers, rifles, and pretty much any tank that can just sit and take pot shots. We got surrounded so many times during this game. Anything but rifles is very hard to use in El Alamein. And of course, as mentioned, tanks are kings. Sitting miles away on hills, just shooting you with their ballistic missiles. Yet despite all of this, I love it. I think El Alamein, even the just couple games I played on it, is becoming my favourite map very fast. It's quite different in terms of gameplay style. Kind of that learning curve that Hill 400 or Hurtgun Forest brought in, but I like that sort of thing. We've had a lot of the same French or even Danish maps here, but the desert, as cool as it looks, also brings in a lot for the gameplay. Also, this is possibly the best looking map we've had. The way they do the sun rays coming through the clouds, oh, it looks so good. Overall, I think it's gonna take quite some getting used to. Teams and gameplay is gonna have to change a bit. The way people and commanders work, there was a lot of complaining about the commanders because they weren't putting supplies in the right place, they weren't putting orders and reinforcements in the right place, and that's a given. That's always going to be the case on a new map because people don't quite know how to play it, the best ways to take advantage of all the points, and even what are the best points to hold or stand in. And, well, there were some new additions, like the Jeeps. We saw the German armored car. I didn't see the British or the US stuff like the Willys Jeep, but <laughs> I, I love seeing these things just cascading across the sand and, well, inevitably having the driver and the passengers getting shot out because it's just a car. It is still a bit of a shame that you can't get in enemy vehicles. That would have been a lot of fun to be able to jump in a Kubelwagen. It would have been so entertaining to just drive around the sandy deserts and something like that, but hey, that's something that I don't think Team 17 are going to be doing anytime soon. I'm going to go and play more of this because El Alamein, it's got a lot good going for it. If I was you and you've got Hell Let Loose, I definitely recommend you go and checking out the new British Forces update. There is still a lot that I haven't introduced you to and there's still many, many more things to explore, like a few more weapons and a few more quality of life updates as well. So go check it out if you haven't already. But until then, I will see you in the next one.